Welcome back to the study of Genesis, the divine obsession. Today we are looking into Genesis chapter 12. And in this chapter we find God is happy with Abram and walks with him as his friend. We find God is pleased with Abram and promises blessings not only to him but his descendants and all generations to come through him. Then we see Abram trusting in God's hand, leaving Haran, traveling through Canaan and worships God through this journey that he's on. We find Abram and his family caught by a famine and moving into Egypt. And that driving them into Egypt was scary and anxiety producing because there he tries to save the life of his wife and of himself by lying to the king of their identity. So that's the synopsis, that's the gist of the story of Genesis chapter 12. If you read Genesis chapter 12, that's what we will find. But I want to take you to a different place of reflection and study here. Because we live in a world where people move from one place to another very easily. We have become a global village. For that reason, we find ourselves living among people of different ethnic and language and religious and cultural differences than our own. If we can learn three major languages, like in the world English and Spanish and Chinese, it is possible to move into any part of the world and with a little hard work, make a home for ourselves because we have the basics to start something successful, the language. But for Abram, when he was asked to leave his land, his world and his security and his future, that was not the case at all. There was nothing easy about the trip that he was about to take. To trust his instincts and move to another world, believing a dream, a vision, a voice in his head, all of which sounds like a fool's errand, was anything but easy. But he trusted that God would keep his word. He trusted that when he left his home, a new world would open up before him. He believed when one door closes, another will be open. He trusted his instincts, trusted that God will walk with him. The story of faith is a story of trusting in the consistency of God's promises. Even when we do not see any way forward, we trust that God is going to keep his word to the end. Because biblical history is full of promises that has been fulfilled. When Abram trusted that God had a plan, even when everything in him said, this is a senseless endeavor to take my son to the top of the mountain and to sacrifice him, he went forward with his conviction. In my so-called enlightened mind of today, I think, what was he thinking? What was Abram thinking? What kind of a God was asking someone to kill their son and their daughter? I don't understand it. But then I believe in the story of salvation through Christ. And that's exactly the story of Jesus. A son is sacrificed. It remains a mystery for me. I will never be able to trust God enough to sacrifice, to kill my child. But Abram does. Not that he killed, God saved. And thus becomes the father of faith. To get there, he had to learn about the consistency of God's actions. He trusted in the consistency of God's action. Therefore, he didn't have to kill his son. He only needed to learn to trust God. God's plan of salvation is consistent always. When God promises the land, he delivers it. And that's what we find in Exodus chapter 33, 1. When God promises a prophet, he sends one in Deuteronomy 18, 15. When God promises a good name and fame, God sets the stage for you to get it. And that's what we find in Psalm 72, 17. He promises admiration of those who follow God's will and make sure it happens in Jeremiah 4, 2. He invites everyone to become good news people, good news people, because God's will come to their rescue in the end and bless their days. Abraham passed through lands that were not his own. 
He crossed from one place to another through the land of other people. He came unscathed through the lands of the enemies as if their friend. Because what prompted him to trust God was a deep conviction, a deep conviction God was walking with him through the dark nights of life. God kept his promises as he kept to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to Moses, to all of God's people and will continue to keep that promise to us. What are we to be? What are we to do to be like Abraham and to turn into Abraham, the father of faith, the man who trusted God's promptings within? What shall we do? How shall we do what is impossible in the midst of never ending doubts and fears and anxieties and uncertainties? And we all have it. Take the lesson from Abraham and bless the world. That's all to it. Take lesson from Abraham and bless the world around you. Bless the people around you. Bless the nations, the enemies and the lands we cross every day, which we do. Some might look like enemies and others like friends. But in the end, we have to cross through all the barriers and boundaries, blessing them rather than cursing them. That is the lesson. The salvation of God is brought about by blessing the land we pass through every day because we do pass through the lands of other people, the people's territories, the things that we do not understand, the world that has embraced us the way we are. The best thing to do is to bless them. Bless the world around you in any way possible. The key thought today is to bless and God will continue to keep his word through your hands and your hearts. So the book of Genesis chapter 12 is asking us to bless the land through which we are passing and we all do. So the story is incredibly beautiful that Abram the, became Abraham the father of faith by passing through the land that was not his own because he trusted in the consistency of God and he learned to bless because that's what God promised Abram and his children that God will continue to bless. Maybe that's what Abraham needed to learn, he thought, and he learned to bless the world around him, and he blessed as he passed. So the lesson of Genesis chapter 12, maybe is an invitation to us. Bless the world, bless the people, bless your surroundings, bless your family, bless your children. The key word, the key word of that chapter is simply, Bless.